serious redditors who have lost someone to suicide what was it like it's been 30 years since my brother died even after all these years there's a blank space in the family like a family portrait with a teen photoshopped out he never ages we all did we had children we have grandkids but he is this space in the family still after all these years we still speak about him now and then we remember him I'll beep extremely painful question. Eight years ago my brother killed himself. First few days I was in shock. I didn't understand the whole situation. Don't remember much of those days. Then I cried, felt anger, and so on. The usual stuff. Then the depression visited me. I lost my will to live and I kind of wanted to make the same decision my brother did. I was depressed for four years. But I'm fine now. So yeah, it was terrible. Never want to feel that kind of pain again. He was a trainee firefighter. Him and his fellow trainees attended our college for some lessons. They and my group of friends would go out every Friday night. Great times were had, but he was hiding his pain. I was 19 when he died. I'm now 60 and I've never forgotten him, never will. So, about 10 years ago a young work colleague was making small comments that were odd, but brushed off by everyone, including me. Then one Friday I got the feeling he was in so much pain, hiding it and was thinking of ending his life that weekend. I persuaded him to come to a local coffee shop after work, about 5pm. We talked about every subject under the sun, shallow topics, deep topics, but not suicide, whilst walking round the city, all night. At about 9.30am the next day we walked past a local animal shelter and on impulse we went in. He suddenly decided he wanted to adopt this scraggly, scruffy, mean-tempered cat that had been returned to the shelter several times because it was so mean. Dot. The shelter really grilled him about his reasons for taking the cat because they didn't want it to keep coming back. He was adamant he would love Grump Bag and not return her. He still has Grump Bag, she's old and even meaner but she and he love each other. He's now also got a wife, kids, house, car etc. Who knew, a grumpy cat would save his life. Edit, we have only spoken about it once and he told me that I saved, sounds dramatic, it wasn't, his life that night and grump bag saved it every day after. All I did was talk his ears off for a fair few hours, grump bag loved him and gave him purpose. Second edit, his wife has asked me to make it very clear that the pecking order in their family is grump bag first, then everyone else a very far second smiley face. I'm a bit late here, but if someone's still scrolling, here goes. And hash x 200 b She was and still is the only person I have ever felt completely comfortable with opening up to about everything, the good, the bad, the light, the dark. She would confide in me as well and I knew what was haunting and eating away at her inside. When I first logged on FB and saw a mutual friend posting a RIP, name backslash, status, I knew it wasn't a car accident, illness, or anything like that, as soon as I saw that I knew exactly what it was but I asked anyway, just to get confirmation I suppose. She was my best friend, only 22 when she did it. One year and a week to the day that I tried to do the same thing myself but failed. She'd probably be the only person that would have been able to stop me then, which is why I didn't reach out to her, and maybe the reason that she didn't reach out to me in the end. What did it feel like? Have you ever been in a crowded room, full of laughter and people enjoying themselves, full of your friends, but still felt completely and utterly alone? I felt that way every single day ever since that day in October nearly six years ago. On top of that there's the guilt. There's the reading and rereading of old Facebook conversations archived indefinitely on some dusty servers somewhere, looking for what I've missed. Wondering if things would have been any differently if I did try to pry instead of simply saying, I don't want to pry when she said something that concerned me a few months prior. Wondering what would have happened if I went to her birthday party the summer before instead of the one I was invited to prior in another part of the state. Then realizing that no matter what I did or said, chances are that nothing would have ended differently. She was the kindest and strongest person I've ever known, doing everything to help those around her, she literally gave everything to those she loved and they took it, they took all of it until there was nothing left. She had dreams, hopes, aspirations that she worked on every single day, but as soon as she'd get close, 
Something would come along and take it all away until she just got too tired to bother trying anymore and just wanted the pain and exhaustion to stop for good. Now I find myself wondering, just about every single day why the beep I'm still here while someone that kind, that smart, that giving isn't, and I'm not gonna lie. It hurts a lot. Worse than you think. After the shock and the loss and the guilt along with intrusive I could have done more. Thoughts, there's also the realization that the person was in that much pain. Any answers you can conjure to the why questions aren't sufficient, there really are no answers. There's just the emptiness of that person's absence. I am diagnosed bipolar 2 and my depressive episodes have a strong suicidal ideation component. I have also ID'd the body of a friend who hanged himself and cleaned out the office of a mentor who jumped off a bridge. Both incidents triggered long depressive episodes and one of them triggered a near psychotic break. I'm better now, but I think about them at the oddest times, even though one of them did it almost 24 years ago. I don't talk about it often, but I tell people that I've had the deluxe therapy. No matter how bad my depressive episodes get, I'm always stopped at the last minute by the thought of my family going through what I went through. That's kept me alive, yet I'd still rather have them around and go to regular therapy. Edit. Thanks for the award. I just hope my story will help others in my shoes, or my friend's shoes. My mum hung herself when I was five and my dad died of a heroin OD when I was 14 that could not be determined suicide or not. I now have generalized anxiety disorder and BPD. The resulting mental health issues suck balls but I hold no pain or resentment towards them. I don't think my life would have been any better had they been around which is sad but also liberates me from the what ifs. Also I can't judge a struggle that's not mine. I'm 24 now so we'll see what I have to say about it all in a decade and if how I feel has changed at all. If you did read this, I appreciate it. Truly. My husband killed himself 23 years ago. I spent several days in utter shock. He talked about doing it but honestly I didn't think he really would. The only thing I can really say is you don't get over it, but you do get through it. There are still some times that I will think about him and it feels like it just happened. Relief. Sadly, I felt relief. A male relative had fallen into addiction. Between numerous stints in jail, then prison and an addiction that couldn't be broken. He basically died years before he took his life. He had a son and wanted to be in his life, but was such a toxic influence that wasn't healthy for him. My cousin became obsessed with conspiracies, living off the grid and natural remedies for his addiction. He became a marijuana evangelist, smoking pot, taking CBD and then still doing coke and heroin. All he could talk about was conspiracies and finding the number 666. He kept getting turned down from detox beds and there wasn't enough space in addiction clinics, so he was homeless for a number of months, living near the DVP in Toronto. His son's mother kept him at a distance and eventually it broke him. He hung himself in a friend's apartment one night. We were told three days later, thank you Toronto Police Service. At first I felt sad, especially for his son. Dot. But then felt relief. I lost a good friend. The hardest thing is imagining how she could have felt so sad and alone and hopeless that this was the choice that made sense to her. It was three years ago and it still hurts so much when I think about how she must have felt. And she had a partner that loved her, like, they were amazing together. When her partner first called me and let me know, I was just in shock. I lay on the couch for hours, I couldn't even cry at first. It just all felt so wrong. Crying came later. I'd never lost someone before like that and coming to terms with it has been a gradual process. I don't think I'll ever get over it, but I am getting used to the empty space her departure has left in the canvas of my life. A few months after she died, I did an oral activated DMT trip. At some point, I lay on my bed and was letting the emotions flow and this mental picture came to my mind of this beautiful ornate black flower, like the most elaborate rose but with petals that were more open. Dot. The petals were velvety and they started to growing, as if the flower was going backwards in time, and as each petal folded inwards I had visions that along with it were being pulled different threads of her lived experience. As the petals closed in on themselves there was this rushing sound like wind that culminated in a snap as the final, bud, of the flower winked out of existence and left empty blackness. 
That sound has stayed with me, like a backward sigh ending in some percussive terrible sharpness. Beep writing this is hard. I think I'm out. It really bothered me, she was a neighbor in her mid-sixties with two adult daughters, one was engaged, the other about to get engaged. She overdosed on fentanyl, she worked in a doctor's office and forged the scripts. Never showed any signs, always seemed happy and went to work at the same time every day. When it happened I just couldn't wrap my head around why a parent would spend their lives bringing up two wonderful children only to kill themselves just before they got to start their own families. Honestly it made me question whether or not I could get pushed to that point. Took a few months to come to terms with it and while physically she wasn't in pain, there must have been a ton of emotional trauma to push her to that point. My oldest brother killed himself when I was 7, he was 19. I didn't know him very well, it's a long story, but my only memories of him are happy. I was so sad when he died, and I was already a pretty sad kid, again, long story. I made a number of attempts on my life for the next 11 years. My mom threatened to have me committed, but refused to let me continue to see a psychiatrist who recommended medication, and would only take me to religion-based counseling. I fought through it myself, with the help of the limited resources I had at school. Basically I decided to stop trying to kill myself out of sheep stubbornness. I thought I was trying to prove something to everyone else, but it was really just me all along. Anyway, I was doing better for a while. Still battling depression and anxiety, but not out of control. Then my dad killed himself, Veterans Day 2013. I was 27. Two decades after my brother's death. I fell to pieces to say the least. I had to go in his house and see the spot where they had to remove floorboards where his blood had soaked through, and the hole in the rafter from the bullet. My boyfriend, now husband, did all he could to keep me from drinking myself to death. It was about five months before I managed to get it together again. I will never make an attempt on my life again. I've been through it twice, and there's not a single person in my life I would want to put through that. I guess my story is a bit different from the other comments. One day, my grandmother asked my father, her son, to come see her on a certain date, only for him to find her dying on her couch from taking alcohol and medicine. She had left paper notes addressed to a lot of different people, she had defiantly put a lot of thought into her suicide. I was not in really good terms with her because she hated my mother, so rather than sad I felt angry that she had my father purposely go through the shock of discovering her dead. It felt selfish and inconsiderate. She had left a note for me and my brother that my father chose to never show us. I was 12 at the time and happened to find the note in a drawer a bit later, I got curious and read it, it said something around the lines of I wish you could have come see me more often. It felt like she was trying to make us feel guilty for her suicide and I understood why my father didn't show it to us. Guy the first served with came home to an empty house. No girlfriend, no furniture, no food, no money, no dog, no bed, nothing. Girl pawned or sold everything she could and blocked him. Talked to him for days after and he seemed like he was doing better. He went dark for about a week and went by to check on him. Found him out back hanging from his tree. To answer the question, it feels like you failed at making sure they were noticed and you didn't do enough. I did everything in my power and ability to help him and still feel like I could have done more. Hate myself to this day for not making him room with me cause maybe he wouldn't have done it. During lockdown in my country I stayed with my ex who was having a difficult time with her mental health and her family was only making things worse. One night I fell asleep and woke up to her breathing heavily next to me and I freaked out asking her if she was okay. She told me that he she had overdosed. I am not good with emotions and lost it and managed to get her the hospital. I saved her life but I lost my mind. I'm still not sure if it was a psychotic episode or not but I just was not the same person for a long time. We drifted apart and she cut me out of her life. I have been dealing with anxiety, PTSD, depression and finding myself through therapy a lot since then. I'm still hung over not being able to do more but I still love them despite the pain I experienced and would love to see them happy. I know this doesn't literally apply to the question but the impact of the experience is still worth mentioning. Dot. Please show your loved ones some unconditional love and listen to them when they are struggling. Thank you. Sucks. Makes you wonder if you could have done something to help them. May your day be filled with joy and happiness. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more quality content every day.